in the old times, the Buddha sometimes went out, didn't have good water to drink, not filter water. They have to use a, you know, charge out their clothes, a corner of their big rope, big blanket to filter the water and drink. I am very lucky already. I am really grateful in my heart. Every little thing I have, I'm grateful. But I earn money by my own means. Yeah, okay, I could have a palace. I could have at least a, a decent house, but I have never asked to build anything for me except some already existing house, and I sometimes bought it for the disciples. And then later it's too small, and we buy a bigger one. It's for everybody to use. I could have asked to build me some castle, you know, smaller castle or something long ago. I did not. I'm not happy even if I live in any luxury house. I was very happy to live in the cave until they told me, Master, it's 21st century, you don't live in the cave anymore. I said, what's wrong with the cave? Very nice. But then they asked people to come and check and the cave is corroded. It could collapse any time. So because of safety, I moved out, truly reluctantly. I made the cave cozy with a beautiful double tent, and I have everything I need. I didn't even need the table because they make like stone table in there. That's perfect. When I first saw the cave, I was in love with it immediately. I couldn't wait until next morning to move. I moved right at midnight after group meditation. Yeah, I would love that cave. Honestly, and I love the Spanish cave, and I love the cave in Sihu. I love all the simple things, simple life that I have. But uh, to do what I do, I, I have to forsake the luxury of a simple life. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's ironic, but that's what it is. For me, to have a simple life is a luxury, yes. You know why I respect the monks so much? Because of their ideal, okay? To live a simple life, unwanting, many things in life, okay? And also because I look upon them as the life I wanted to have. I like to see them, <laughs> at least, <laughs> to think that, oh, that's a wonderful life. Truly, I like it like that. I want a simple. No, I can't. It's okay, it's not, uh, it's not the worst thing to do, of course, yeah, but truly I would have loved to be free, more free, you know, live a simple life like them, a couple of pair of clothes, go anywhere, anytime, depend only on heavens, with not a care in the world. When you're tired, you sleep. When you're hungry, you eat. Everything is illusion anyway. What for you want this, want that? And what's the use anyway? And I'm old now. I know even better <laughs> to know that you take nothing with you. Uh, okay? Mm. It's just that I have to do what I have to do. And uh, like it or not, I still have to do it. Yeah. All of us, I don't mean I'm the only one who has trouble, you also have your troubles. Yeah, sometimes you wish to be here, to just meditate with Master, eat some simple food the ashram provides so that you can advance more in your spiritual practice or whatever your dream is. But then you have to go back to your job, your family, your children, yeah, and the expected community. Yeah, and that is also your pain. But we can't have everything in this life. I accept my lot. <laughs> but I like the, <laughs> the monk's life. Not necessarily they have to wear the monk's dress. It's just a symbol of freedom. <laughs> this is all I can afford, okay? If we build more, of course we can. But then we will cut many, many hundreds, thousands of trees and plants and disturb a lot of animals. Nowadays, everywhere is already empty of trees and plants and greenery and natural already. If we continue, I'd rather change the retreat to a warmer season, yes. And then we just sit in the open air. Huh? You bring your tent. In case if it rains, you just quickly run there and zip up. 
and, zzz, and then you're safe. Nowadays, it's so convenient. Think of the Buddha. He sat under the Bodhi tree at least for forty some days. Then he got enlightenment. You sit under the roof for forty thousand years, maybe not. <laughs> huh? Think of Lord Mahavira, yeah? Uh, I wanted to read you some uh, from the Trivitaka Buddhist uh, Sutra, some of them, yeah? Tripitaka is big, big, big. I cannot read it all to all, and it is not always necessary. Uh, but there's always something going on, and I have to pour out my calendar like that. <laughs> By the way, I want to help advertising for that company, for the printer company, the publisher, okay, is in India. Actually, it's a good merit for them if I read them free for you, but in the legal sense, <laughs> yeah, I might incur some debt or karma. And so I will make it up to them. I advertise their publication name, Sunny Publications. They have many other books, okay? Because Sunny, S like Sunny, A like Apple, a H like hotel, mm. <laughs> hotel, mm. and like November. I like international. Okay, huh? Sunny, sunny, sunny publications. <laughs> yes, they have many other books. Okay, mm. very interesting. So if you want to buy something from them, you can order, huh? And that's very good for them. Or oh, email even. So oh. <laughs> the book. <laughs> Yes, many misspellings and misarrangements, but they have email, okay? I thought it was, oh, long time ago. Remember, I have to correct, and I have to read for a long time in order to guess what they meant. I did guess right. Email sunny at sunnypublications.com, okay? So, actually, for television, it depends on what television. You just advertise for a few seconds, you have to pay a lot. So I guess I pay that debt already. <laughs> but I will donate something. In India, they don't earn a lot of money. I don't know if many people would buy this book. So I will donate some money, okay? Yes. Uh, uh, help me, FG, to send them about 12,000 US dollars. Is that enough, brother, sister? Enough? More, More than enough? Yes. Or you say more or more than enough? It's more than enough, Master. Okay. Yeah, it's great money suk, suk, for India. Sukranji. Shukran. <laughs> Shukriya. Shukriyan. <laughs> Very good. Say hello to your husband, huh? Sure, Master. He's a good boy. <laughs> you both have no problem anymore, right? No, Master. Say hello no. to your Master, your previous Master, or your still present Master, okay? Once a Master, always a Master. No, he, Master, you are our present Master. Yes. He, Forever. Don't, don't mind, don't mind. Don't yeah. mind. Just say hello to him when yeah. you have a chance to talk to him. Actually, he wants to come and see you, Master. He asked us last time when we visited He wants to see me? Yes, Master. Wow, he wants please, to come. welcome. He wants to come and see Anytime, we will treat him like a king if he comes. Or and he can you, talk Master. here in my assembly okay. and teach them something. <laughs> because he has been teaching you and made you good disciples. I am in debt to him. Tell him I am uh, Sukran Ji, uh -huh. uh, Master Ji. Okay? Thank you, Master. Yes. It's not him who made trouble, it's the gods, the yeah. lower gods who, who think you should not go any higher. So after you yes. reconcile with them, they let you free. Okay? Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank we, you. Master. We have a problem because if we leave kindergarten, the kindergarten teachers, we should not look down upon them, we should always thank and remember them. Remember I had a teacher when I was in primary school, and I always treated him like he was still my teacher. Yes. Not, not spiritually even, yeah? Yes. He passed away already, bless his soul, he's in new land, bravo. Mm. He was so good. So humble. <laughs> he treated me like a master then, <laughs> after initiation. Uh, but I still treat him like a teacher. Uh, we're both very <laughs> polite. 
So now you know, huh? Because there are more things behind those stories. I told you there are more things, okay? More things. But because I read that, the last story I read that is forbidden to <laughs> to tr transmit or to copy, or so I, I stop it. So if you want to read more of that, please buy this book, okay? Yeah. Call it The God of Peace, Lord Mahavira. <laughs> Bahut? <laughs> Bahut Acha. Tika hai? Tika hai. Tika hai? Tika hai? I know some Indian Hindu, but I didn't live there long enough, didn't have enough time. I was busy helping the masters, and everybody speaks English there, you know, international ashram, just like here. <laughs> had no time to learn. Um, I knew some, I forgot. I knew some Sanskrit, I also forgot. <laughs> yeah, all we need is English. English is all we need. <laughs> it's easy to learn, easy to speak, easy to understand. Huh? Okay. Uh, next time we will reserve the VIP house for the monks and the nuns, so you'll be more warm and comfortable. It's just I'm too busy to think about all the conveniences uh, that you don't have. You know, in the temple is more more comfortable. Of course, whatever temples in Taiwan or Korea nowadays is a kind of modern, very comfortable. Yes, you don't think the monks and nuns have money because they come here. No, maybe that's all they have. It's because I knew before, you know. <laughs> I knew before, <laughs> they expect that if I travel from Germany to Taiwan, I must have had money, but that was all I had. They put me in a hotel and I paid with my last money. <laughs> uh, afterwards, the uh, Vietnamese temple, you know, Master Thích Tân Hàn, he took me in, yeah. They sent me there, so he had no choice anyway. Yeah, he was already <laughs> at the doorsteps. <laughs> Uh, he was very kind, bless his soul. I help him, don't worry, yeah. I repay him more than, more than you can imagine, huh? Okay. And then later I stayed at the Chinese temple. They all wanted me. Many Chinese temples, Taiwanese temples want me to stay with them. But I already stayed at the Vietnamese temple, so I came back. <laughs> and later I went to America, stayed with a Chinese master, mm, teacher, monk, okay. Uh, you want to hear something from the Tripitaka? Yes. Mm. Ah, yeah. This is from the Sutta Nipata. Okay? Mm. Uh, there are many, and in order to read to you, I sometimes have to scan the whole book to see which one is suitable for your wisdom before <laughs> I dare to show it. Okay, this is a very interesting... Uh, so many, uh, many things here are interesting, but uh, there are some interesting things, yeah, okay? Easy to, to listen to, easy to digest, huh? Okay, huh? Yeah. It's not, uh, it's not something very profound or hard to understand, since you always love only bedtime stories anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm finished with Lord Mahavira stories and other Buddhist stories, so I found something interesting in uh, uh, Nipata. Okay, the monks and nuns maybe know already, so I ask your permission to show off my very little knowledge about Buddhism in front of these uh, ignoramuses. <laughs> <laughs> Joking, you're wise, <laughs> wise, compassionate, good, beautiful. Yeah, that the comparisons between the Buddha and a lay person. This lay person is a cattle man, you know, the rancher, we call it nowadays the rancher. I don't know how this conversation or this um, comparison came about. <laughs> it just recorded in here, 
and translate it into English. This one allows you to read or copy or do whatever, a typical Buddhist <laughs> sutra. Thank to Bichu Tanisaro. Uh, the real name is Jeffrey de Graaf. I will try to find out if he's still with us and we make an offering. You guys help me, okay? If I forget, I already read the name of the publication and the Bichu. Help me to make an offering to them, okay, huh? Yeah. Help me with 10,000 US dollars for the Bichu. Oh, he's probably still alive because uh, he has a copyright, uh, Tani Saro Bichu, 2016. So it's new, it's new. We thank him, yes, for his uh, benevolent deed, taking his time to translate into English and print it for us to enjoy and to benefit the multitude. May the Buddhas bless you and keep you in Nirvana forever. Unless you want to come back and play with us, the ignoramuses. <laughs> Ignorant beings. I read it and I have picked some here for you. I marked it. Yeah. I cannot read all of this now, but maybe another time, okay? Whenever we can. Now. This is a comparison between the Buddha and the, uh, the cattle man, the rancher. It's not explained here how this comparison came about. Maybe just, just at random, eh? some monks just thinking that uh, why you have to be a monk, or what's the difference between the Buddha and any ordinary person. And they picked a cattle man, a man who has a herd of cows or oxen to take care of them, yeah, to use them to till the land, and to use them to make a living for himself, of course. Né? So here are the verses to compare the two of them. The word enlightened one, word honor one, and the cattle man. Okay. <laughs> 